we will be covering the function section of the math syllabus. We have uploaded another video that covers functions. However, this video will go more in depth into understanding the functions, how they work and how to sketch them. So when we work with functions, we need to understand function notation. Now this is function notation shown to us over here. The function is called f. You may see a g of x or an h of x or an i of x. Any letter could be used to label a function. f of x refers to the y value of the that it corresponds to the x value. x is the independent variable and obviously when x is plugged in to the equation when an x value is plugged in a y value is received. When we look at inverse functions you simply interchange your x and y in the equation. It reflects about the y equals x line. Your x and y coordinates switch. For example, if you have the graph y equals 2x plus 1, to get the inverse y to the negative 1, we simply go x in place of y equals 2y in place of x plus 1. We simply solve that to get y on its own and we get y equals x minus 1 over 2 which is the inverse of y equals 2x plus 1. It's good to know that your domain of your inverse is the range of your function and the range of your function, sorry, and the domain of your function is the range of your inverse. For parabolas, it's important when you find the inverse to restrict the domain to produce a function. You must restrict it either side of the turning point so that you have a function. If you do not restrict it, it will not be a function as you will have more than one y value per x value. When dealing with parabolas, in order to get the inverse function, you may have to complete the square. If you are unsure how to do this, please watch our video on quadratic equations and inequalities. Then we move on to transformations. Often they will ask you to stretch or shift a graph. For this, if you are asked to stretch a graph vertically, you will stretch it as if you are required to stretch it by A, then your Y coordinates will simply be A times your Y coordinate. It will simply be Y equals A times F of X. If you're asked to stretch it horizontally, it will simply be Y equals F times the amount that you are asked to stretch it by times your X coordinate. Therefore, it'll be your x coordinate will simply be divided by your value that you are asked to stretch the graph by. When we deal with reflections, if you reflect about the x axis, your y simply changes sign. Therefore, your y would be negative f of x. If you look at your coordinates, your y will simply be the negative of what it was. If you are asked to reflect it about the y axis, your x sign changes y will simply be your f of negative x. If you look at your coordinates, x, y will simply become negative x, y. If you're asked to reflect it about the y equals x line, this is just another way to ask for the inverse function. And in this case, you will solve it as we've shown above, finding an inverse, and your coordinates will go from x, y to y, x. Next, we look at shifts, which are very common in tests, exams, for both IEB and CAP syllabus. If you have a horizontal stretch, sorry, a horizontal shift, we look at y equals f of x minus p. Now this goes against what most people think. If you're looking for a horizontal shift, your sign within your bracket is opposite. So y, y equals f of x minus p your coordinates will go from x, y to x plus p, y. If it's x minus p, it simply means that the graph is shifted right. Contrary to what most people think, this sign most people think would shift left, it shifts the graph right. In this case over here, y equals f of x plus p, we go from x, y to x minus p, y. Therefore, the graph has shifted left. With a vertical shift, it's much easier. Your signs are the same. Y equals f of x minus q will shift it down. As you can see here, we'll go from x, y to x, y minus q. And here, 
to move it up, we go y equals f of x plus q. Go from x, y to x, y plus q. Moving your graph q units up. And in this case, moving your graph q units down. Over here, we move p units right. And over here, we move p units left. Next, we move on to the forms of graphs. The simplest form of a graph is the straight line, which many of you will know by the form y equals mx plus c, where m is your gradient and c is the y-intercept of your graph. In order to work out the gradient, you will use this formula where you will take two points with both xy coordinates, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Horizontal line will have the formula y equals c where c is a constant and a vertical line will have the formula x equals c however this is not a function when dealing with the parabola we have three forms of the parabola that most that are most commonly used we have y equals ax squared plus bx plus c this is the most common form we have y equals a bracket x minus p squared plus q this is another common form and less commonly used we have the root form of y equals a x minus x1 being your first root, x minus x2 being your second root. So the sign of a in this equation gives you the shape of the graph. If it's a positive a, we have an upside down parabola. And if we have a negative a, we have a what they call a sad face parabola. Slaw is a nice rule that we can use. If the signs here are the same, our turning point is on the left of the y-axis. And if they are opposite, our turning point is on the right of the y-axis. Your y-intercept for this graph is your c-value. And your turning point, as described in the last video which covered functions, is negative b over 2a. You would simply take in your coefficient of x, negative b over 2, times your coefficient of x squared. Then you can simply sub in that value into your equation to get your y-value and therefore your coordinates of your turning point. In much the same way, the sine of a in this equation gives you the shape of the graph. The y-intercept, you simply sub x equals 0, and you'll get your y-intercept. And turning point is p, this value over here, q, where p is the x value at your turning point, and q is your y value at your turning point. With this form of the equation over here, sine of a is simply your shape, as in the last two. Your x-intercepts are x1 and x2. In order to find your y-intercept, you simply sub x equals 0. And your turning point is x1 plus x2 over 2. Then you sub that x-value into your equation to get your y-value at your turning point. Moving on to the hyperbola. The most common form is y equals k over x minus p plus q. y equals q is your horizontal asymptote. That's your Q over here. X equals P is your vertical asymptote. Remember to be careful of your signs when you're taking your vertical asymptote as P. Your domain is X is an element of the reals, except X cannot be P. And your range is Y is an element of the real numbers, but Y cannot equal Q. If A is greater than zero, your graph will be in the first and third quadrants. And if A is less than zero, your graph will be in the second and the fourth quadrants. When we look at this equation up here, sorry, this diagram up here, sometimes they will ask you to work out your lines of symmetry. In this case, you use the point of intersection of your two asymptotes, which, you will, which will be PQ from your equation. And you know that your positive line of symmetry, your gradient is one, and your negative line of symmetry, your gradient is negative one, and from there, you can use y equals mx plus c. You've got m as your gradient. You've got an x and a y coordinate, and you can solve for c. Then we move on to the exponential graph. The most common form is y equals a times b to the x minus p plus q. y equals q is your horizontal asymptote. If f of x equals b to the x and b is greater than 1, it will have this form over here. If f of x equals b to the x and b is greater than 0 but less than 1, it will have this form. And if f of x equals negative b to the x, it will have this form shown over here. 
with the logarithmic function, it is the inverse of an exponential function. The most simple form is y equals log base a x minus p, where the vertical asymptote is x equals p. If it has the form y equals log negative x, we'll have this form over here. Equation y equals negative log a negative x, we'll have this form over here. y equals log base a x, then we'll have this form. And if it's y equals negative log a x, then we'll have this form over here. These are just useful to know if you're asked to sketch, just so you know the simple um, shape of the graph. When sketching graphs, there are a number of things that you should look out for and find before you plot the graph on an axis. When sketching a parabola, it's good to find your y-intercept, making x0 to solve for y. Find your x-intercept by making y0. Find your turning point using negative b over 2a, then solving using that x value to get your y value. And find your axis of symmetry, which is halfway between your two x-intercepts. When we are asked to plot a hyperbola graph, we follow the four steps listed below. First, we plot our asymptotes, which are the p and q values, as we saw earlier. We find our x and our y intercepts by making y equal to zero to find our x and x equals to zero to find our y. We use any x value to plot and find points. You can sub points along the axis just to get a general shape. And we use values from along the axis to plot the second line. When we deal with an exponential graph, we find points and plot them. P determines, we must remember that P determines our horizontal movement and Q determines our vertical movement. When you're finding the equation of an exponential function, you always start with the Y intercept so that B to the zero in Y equals A times B to the exponent, your exponent is zero, therefore equaling one and you can solve for A. Substitute in another point to find a once you've once you've used b to the zero equals one you'll be able to solve for one of your unknowns and then you substitute in another point to find your second unknown being a then we move on to cubic graphs a positive cubic graph will have this form shown here and a negative cubic graph will have this form shown over here first you must find the y-intercept which is where x equals zero your x-intercepts, you can use a calculator or you can use the method shown below where you get one factor and then use your intuitive method to solve for your second bracket by saying we need an x cubed. Well, then this has to be x squared to multiply out here. In the same way, you find your x squared by going, well, here we have minus 2x squared and here we will have plus 6x squared. So, sorry, we will need a plus 6x squared to get 4x squared. And over here, we simply go minus 2 times what will give us negative 18, and it's 9. In that way, we can solve and get all of our x-intercepts. Stationary points, we simply use derivatives, which we will learn in calculus, and there will be a long video sh um, showing how to do that. You sub x value your x value into your equation to get your y values. Remember, once you've got your derivative and found your stationary points, you must plug your x value back into your equation and not your derivative to get your y values. When dealing with the shape, we use our second derivative. If the second derivative is greater than zero at a turning point, it's a local minimum. If f double dash, which is our second derivative of x, is less than zero, we have a local maximum at our turning point. And if f double dash x equals zero, we have a point of inflection at the turning point. At a point of inflection, our f double dash x will equal zero. If you're wanting to find a point of inflection, you simply make your f double dash x equal to naught and you will solve for your x value. Sometimes they may ask you to plot a deriv derivative versus the actual graph. So if we have a graph over here and we want to plot its derivative, then we'll simply say here our up until this turning point, our gradient is positive. Therefore, our derivative graph is above the x-axis. From this turning point to this turning point, our gradient is now negative. Therefore, our deri derivative graph is then below the x-axis until this point. The turning point of the derivative graph will be the point of inflection as shown on the cubic. 
it corresponds with the point of inflection on the cubic is the turning point of our derivative graph. From this turning point onwards, we have a positive gradient. Therefore, our derivative graph is above the x-axis and positive.